The 2017 motorsports season is up and on the way. May have been a bit slow in revving up, but it's well over 200 miles per hour now. Certainly the Race One program is back this year to bring you all the amazing highlights of this action-packed season. After the break, we jump right into it all. Welcome back to Race One. The Bushy Park Motorsport Inc. or BPM SI now has two events in the bag for 2017. Club Chairman Sean Maloney told us all about those events and the club's plans for the remainder of the year. From, from my perspective, uh, you know, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Um, we had two enjoyable race meets, um, loads of positives out of them. Everybody had um, a ball, you know, the, the racing was fun and competitive. Um, the, the, the one negative out of the first two race meets for the year are the, the quantity of, of uh, competitors getting out, um, you know, and it's, it's a simp simply a function of the, the times that we're in. And, you know, it's pretty difficult for the guys economically and the club does what it does uh, what it can in terms of subsidizing um, entries and and obviously the BMF is always is always negotiating uh, insurance rates and trying to keep them as low as possible the the racing of itself was 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 great I watched all the races um, the three that I, I competed in three of them and had a ball there and watched the rest and and we have a lot of um, we got some new guys that are coming up through Group One that are having a blast. The um, the Bimmer guys from the Bimmer Cup series out at Vault Cruz, um, they've joined us in Group One and they've been having a ball. That's been growing leaps and bounds. So um, you know, when if they get enough numbers, they may be able to go out there and, and have their own race, or maybe even maybe even have them combine merge with the with the Swifts. Uh, lots of discussions, lots of food for thought, but so far the year, is, the year is going well. Just like Rally Barbados and everyone wants to be out for Rally Barbados, you know, a lot of the guys want to be out for the, for the Caribbean Motor Racing Championship. And, and so if your budget only allows, you know, one or two sets of tires, you're, you're going to wait. So I think there's lots of guys that are waiting. Um, and there's lots of guys that are, that are saving up to, to finish rebuilding their engines and suspensions and you know how it goes. Um, so yeah, positive but you know I don't, think we're, I don't think we're anywhere back to where we were in the 90s yet. I think that, um, I think that on a whole things would have to um, improve in, you know, in, in Barbados in general before before we get back to having a, a vibrant circuit racing. Sean also gave us an update on the Barbados Festival of Speed. Festival of Speed is October 14th. Um, all of the all of the structural work for the for the lights is complete, um, the and all of the underground work, the posts are in place, the concrete posts, the element of the posts, and um, it's just for the the actual light posts and lights to be installed now. That actually needs to be installed before July 1st because BPMSI's next event is a night event on a Saturday, so that'll be up and tested before festival of speed. Festival of Speed, I'm sure everyone knows already, um, Jensen Button is coming in. I can tell you that it's going to be, um, we're going to have a, a Formula One type vehicle on the track as well as in the air. And um, so think fighter jets and it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. Um, when the particulars are, are made public, um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a tremendous event. It's going to be, uh, there's going to be things unlike uh, we've ever seen before in Barbados. And, um, and I think every year the, the team that are putting Festival of Speed together are going to be challenging themselves to make it 
um, to make it even better. So you could almost shut your eyes and buy tickets for that now because it's just going to be an amazing show that, you know, generally you've got to go to places like Australia and New Zealand and those kind of places to see the kind of aerial aerobics and, and action on the track that we're going to see on October 14th. So look out for an awesome year of events at the Bushy Park Circuit. Now speaking about events and staying at the circuit, we race right over to the Barbados Association of Dragsters and Drifters, or BAD. Drag racing in Barbados is growing at a phenomenal rate, with two events also in for 2017. Club chairman Jason Downey had some information to share with the Race 1 team. We've had two phenomenal events this year. Uh, our first event in particular had over 50 entries and that is unheard of for any club to have such a great first event of the year. Um, second event, we had a slightly smaller field but equal in terms of quality. We've had our own records smashed in the first event and then the guys came back and smashed them again in the second event. So in terms of the rate of progression, I think everything is just, it, we're coming along a, a lot faster. The bad club seems to be attracting more and more drivers. Everyone wants a piece of the drag racing action. Well, I think one of the main reasons is that as a driver, you can bring your daily driver. It really doesn't matter what you drive, you could just come in and bring it. Um, you only get to the point where you need roll cage and, and harness and, and suits and all of that when you start going below uh, 7.3 seconds. And the average road car is not gonna do that. So, you know, you should be able to bring whatever you have and, and participate. Our guys are always coming faster and faster. Um, we do have invitations for our guys to go to other Caribbean islands to do some events. Um, the reciprocal arrangement is not quite true because as Bushy Park is a fantastic facility, don't get me wrong, but guys are not willing to come here to do an eighth of a mile. They're all looking for at least a thousand foot for a quarter mile. So unless we can get those facilities here in Barbados, we, we won't be able to have any um, any outside competition at the moment. We started out the year, um, our goal was to get uh, a grade to the software, the drag racing software. So we managed to get that. So next event, we'll be using that. Um, what, but, what is the software? Is? Oh, th this is the software from Porter Tree that runs the whole drag racing aspect of it. So um, we were not, it, we, we right now have to manually do trees and pair them up and stuff. So this new upgrade to the software should facilitate that and it should make events run a lot smoother. Um, we do listen to the fans, we do appreciate all of the feedback we see on social media, both negative and positive. And one of the things that we're looking to do between this year and next year is we're looking to get like a scoreboard system so that as a run finishes, the times and speeds, etc., will be put to these boards automatically so that the people on the hill will be able to, to see what's going on in real time. Um, we know that there are complaints that they can't hear us that good, so I think these display boards are, are necessary. Um, but the cost of those, they're, they're extremely expensive. So we're talking almost 20,000 US dollars for a set. So that is something that we have um, long term, we have to look at, or see if there's another alternative that, that we can find out there. Jason also updated us about the Paragon drag strip. Paragon right now, I, I would say no. Um, we do have the length of Paragon, so Paragon has the quarter mile, but the feedback from the drivers is that the, the surface is not the greatest at all. So they, they don't feel entirely safe when you start getting up in those speeds in the quarter. So our next event is Sunday, August 20th, again at Bushy Park. And uh, I had a word with, with the current record holder, Saul, Saul Yusuf, and you know, he, he has brought now two cars um, without cages, so he, can't, he definitely can't come again unless he brings a third one. Um, but he has assured me that he's put enough a purpose-built drag car for the next event, and we're gonna see some five-second passes. So yeah, drag racing at the Bushy Park Circuit is where you should be for all their events.
Heading on to the business of rallying now with the first a shakedown rally to Saul Rally Barbados, which had a 38 car entry list with 10 planned stages over 37 kilometers. Competitors were ready to take to the tarmac roads, of which would be the second event for the 2017 season. Defending Saul Rally Barbados champion, Jamaican Jeffrey Panton, will be going for his third consecutive win of this event, and surely it's looking like a done deal. Barbados's Roger the Sheriff Skeet is aiming to bring the title back home to Barbados in the Subaru S12B. England's Rob Swan is thirsty for a Rally Barbados win. Maybe this will be his year. Barry Mears may be a bit too quick into that corner, but he's still working on handling issues with the car. He'll be quick over the stages. problems with suspension um, so a lot of people saw kept telling me the car was very nervous nervous in Shorts Hill um, so we have basically a problem with suspension and geometry um, and we haven't been able to get the right parts to correct it for this weekend so hopefully fix that for Rally Barbados. Roger Hill for his part will be aiming to stamp his authority in the WRC2 class. Brett Watson wants the top spot in the group of BMWs. Andrew Jones is fast and straight, but his wife, the co-driver, wants some sideways action. And then it's over to Mark Thompson in the Stag-sponsored Mitsubishi Evolution, nearly losing it at this Malvern turn. And there's the ever-spectacular Neil Corbin. He now has the sideways title. Out for the first time in a while with no luck on his side is Calvin Briggs, who takes out this utility pole. He was soon up and running again, however, no serious damage to the car. And Avanash Chatrani comes into the corner a bit too quick as well, but holds it and avoids contact with anything. Good save. Justin Campbell in the BMW M3 hard on the brake, he'll have stiff competition in his group. Dane Skeet flying low in the Pujo. Trinidad's David Coelho is back again for Rally Barbados 2017. Here the gear changes from a mile away, the Honda Civic of Darrell Clark. After a few years out of competition, Logan Watson is back and beating on the Beamer. Stuart McCleary is sure to have the back hanging at every corner of Saul Rally Barbados. Then it's the Citroen DS3 driven by Paul Horton from Turks and Caicos. Paul Ennis here in the Honda Civic. Modified one is the group. He'll be going for a podium place. Here's Wayne Archer in another one of the many BMWs entered in both events. Now well-known circuit driver, German Pope, walking the Honda on the rally scene. Another known circuit man, Philip Moe, in his Toyota SR, dealing with the business at hand. We're seeing a few of this type of BMW recently. It's Greg Kozier this time with co-driver Natasha Farno. Edward Corbin in the Daihatsu Charmant, consistent and fast. Another BMW, Stan Hartling is the pilot, 
He's also from Turks and Caicos. Trevor Mapp will go in search of a group win in the Clubman 1 class. Also out for the first time in a while is Sean Cummins in the Stag sponsored BMW. Making it good for the third step on the podium for this event was Roger Ski. He needs two steps up in a few weeks' time. We've had someone from overseas win the last two Rally Barbados titles. Are you going to bring it back home for us? Well, I mean, that's, every time I sit in a car, that's my objective to represent Barbados first and foremost, you know, and then, then all of my sponsors, Sol, Flo, Simpson Motors, Automotive Art, WTI, best I can, as well as enjoy the event, because if we are enjoying it, I'm sure spectators are enjoying it as, as they should, and they're an important component too, so, yeah, we would be giving them a tough time if possible, and the car is working a lot better than it has in the last three years. A lot of best. Thank you much. Rob Swan from the UK kept it neat and tidy to bring the Cebu home in second spot overall. And continuing in his winning ways and seeming simply unstoppable is Jamaica's Jeffrey Panton in the Ford Focus World Rally Car. Very near miss there for Panton though. Luck, surely, is on his side. Are you going for the overweight victory at Raleigh Barbados once again? Oh, most definitely. I think everybody is. Um, you know, we would really like to do a three-peat of you know, having three in a row, and um, that's our aim and that's our goal. So it's on to the big ones now. The King of the Hill and Saul Raleigh Barbados events. King of the Hill serves as a final warm-up for competitors to Raleigh Barbados. Rally director Neil Bernard provides us with all the info on these two events. Flow King of the Hill on Sunday, May 28th, we're going to use the same venue and stage we did in 2016 and 2015, which is Hangman's Hill up to Lane Castle through Vaucluse Raceway. That event runs from 10 until roughly 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon and will encompass all of the drivers. This year, we're having four runs. All four runs will be timed runs for a result. Last year we had the first run as a sighting or practice run. This year the guys go at it from the get-go. Now on to Saul Rally Barbados. This year we're having a ceremonial start from Saul Warrens. On Friday, June the 2nd, start, the rally will start at 9 p.m. And that will lead us straight into our first two special stages for the rally. We're actually using a single venue in the North Island, which I'll come to in shortly. And we're using that back-to-back -back twice. This single stage uh, forms the two runs, forms almost 10% of the stage mileage in the entire rally. So it really does provide a bit of a baptism of fire for all crews uh, to kick off this year's event. Uh, is the finish this year returns to Bushy Park in St. Philip. We have a very technical two kilometer layout, which will take in elements of the full circuit, cart links, the bridge, and will also be the final time special stage of this year's rally. So this event, the final stage at Bush Park, will actually count towards results. We are starting in Sailor Gully and ending in Diamond Corner. The stage is a shade over seven kilometers long. As I mentioned earlier, the competitors will do this twice. The first run will start at 10 p.m. We are linking this stage through a section that has previously been unused for competition, and therefore this stage in itself is gonna be new to all competitors. As I said, there are two components, which two, both of which have been used previously. One very seldom, which is about a bit of a way in, and then one which has never been used before. So interestingly, we're starting off the rally on what we think is going to be fairly level, a pretty level playing field. So that's Friday night. On Saturday, we are starting with a version of a stage that we did last year, which was very successful and very warmly received by the competitors. Uh, last year, we started near St. Swithin's Church and went south towards Lambert's, uh, sorry, we went south towards Luke Hill. This year, we're reversing this stage. This is the first stage on Saturday morning, and we're starting from Lambert's and finishing this at St. Swithin's in the north of the island. Uh, again, this stage is a lengthy stage, and again, we'll provide some, some good action to kick off the morning 
if the guys hadn't already got the rust off from Friday night. From there, we go to our traditional KM Field venue and the stage there. We're starting, uh, it's actually, this stage is very similar to what we had done uh, last year. This year, however, we're going through the Vaucluse circuit on the way south. On Sunday, we start off with Toyo Tires Padmore. Uh, this is, again, the reverse version of the stage we ran last year. Uh, we're starting in Padmore Village, running out south of Bushy Park through Maps. But this year, we're turning right, heading out to the end of the stage near Golden Grove. We have done this once before, again, about four or five years ago. Um, the road's in pretty good nick. So we've gone back at that uh, to give the guys, again, some, some difference and changes in that, that stage. From there, we go into St. John, and we're running Malvern out to Tappy Pond uh, through Wilson Hill. Again, this is a traditional stage. What we're doing this year, again, is we turned it around and we used it last year, so it's in the reverse direction. And then finally, we go to Bushy Park. And this is the route that we have put together Bushy Park. Basically, it runs, it essentially runs the track in an anti-clockwise direction uh, and utilizes, as I spoke about earlier, uh, the bridge, several connecting uh, cart part, parts. Um, and it also encompasses a, a long uh, section down the whole of the front straight, practically, which will end up with a hairpin, uh, and then back down where you came from, and then off into the infield, which should provide some pretty spectacular um, viewing for spectators in the stands. Yes, we are now getting started as we look forward to two weekends of some fast-paced action and you'll have all the highlights right here on Race 1. Be safe and enjoy the events. Yeah,